Hi everyone, I'm Jen Sheffer, Mobile Learning Coach for Burlington Public Schools, and today I'm going to walk you through how to get started using Google Hangouts live on air. So to begin, you'll want to go to your Google Plus page. You can see here I'm at plus.google.com, and from there I'm going to click on this drop-down menu and I'm going to select Hangouts, and then that page will load. And I can click on this Start a Hangout on Air button here, or I could click, out, click on Hangouts on Air and that page will load. Now, a Hangout on Air is going to be recorded live on YouTube, and that's one of the greatest advantages of a Hangout on Air, is that it can be archived and it can be seen not only by your local school community, but by a global audience. So, um, with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and click on Start a Hangout on Air, and you'll begin by giving, an, giving the Hangout a name. So, I'm going to say Hangout on Air Training. I can tell people what the Hangout is going to be about. Um, and I can leave this at now, or I could schedule it for a later date and time and then a specific duration of the call. But for the purposes of this training video, I'm going to leave it at now. I can also change my audience, but I would recommend leaving it at public so it's visible by anyone, anywhere. And this is not to be confused with the panelists that will actually be in the call. A Google Hangout can have up to 10 people, uh, but the um, public audience is separate from your panelists, so I'm going to show you in a few minutes how to invite panelists to be on the call. But again, I would just go ahead and leave this at public. Now before you hit share, if this is the first time you've ever done a Hangout on Air, you will be walked through a two-step process to link your YouTube channel with your Google Plus page, and that will allow live streaming events. It's a very quick process that um, requires that you enter your phone number and then Google will send you a code via text that you enter and then the two services are linked and you'll be ready to go. And I've already done that so uh, for this training video um, I can just go ahead and click on share. And then that is going to load and here I am at the Hangout On Air event page. If I need to edit the event, I can click on Edit Event. And I can change the date and the time if necessary. I can also plus one this on Google+, Plus, which is equivalent to liking a Facebook post, if you will. I can also share this event on Google+. Plus. I could add some comments and then share that uh, via Google+. Plus. A couple other things I want to point out before we get started is this details section here. You'll see that I created the event and that it's going to be public. You'll see when it's taking place, the date and the time. This button right here, if I click on it, I can moderate how guests can interact with the Hangout. I can control if they can comment or invite other people, if they can add photos. Again, I can edit the event. I can manage my guest list, duplicate the event, or delete the event if I have to cancel it. This links button is very important right here. I can send out a link to the event page so that viewers can watch the Hangout from my event page. I can send this through email. I can put it on social networks. I can uh, embed it in a website or a blog. I can do the same thing with the link to the YouTube page where people could watch it uh, through my YouTube channel. And then I can also embed the YouTube video onto my website or my blog. So those are your link sharing buttons. Um, and they're really important if you want to promote the event. And as people decide whether or not they're going to watch, you'll see that um, your, your viewers will um, start appearing here as they decide, yes, I'm going to be able to watch the event. When you're ready to go, you can click on Start. And once we get into the Hangout, I'm going to show you um, several apps that you can use that will uh, make the Hangout experience um, even better. So right here, Inviting guests and requiring guests to be 18 plus to join the video call. I typically skip that, so I'm going to go ahead and click on skip, and then you're going to see me. The Hangout toolbox is going to open, and I'll explain that in a few minutes. Uh, but you'll see here, this is sort of a countdown. I'm not on air immediately. Um, I'm going to show you, you can control exactly when you go on air. Um, while that's loading, I want to uh, point out a couple things. Over here on the right, you'll notice there's that black off air button. Uh, that will turn yellow and it will say live once we're ready to go live and I'll show you that in a few minutes. Um, this button right here too, um, if you mouse over it you'll find it. This is sort of an enhanced uh, effect feature um, and it affects your, your video uh, quality. And smooth is one that I uh, tend to like. There's black and white. Um, there's a spotlight one, a brighten, focus, so you can experiment with those, but I, I recommend smooth. It, it makes the video look really nice. Um, again, down here on the bottom right, 
you have your links buttons as well. So again, this is where you can share the link to the event page, your YouTube channel, and the video embed for um, the Hangout. So if we jump over here to the left-hand side, you'll notice one of the first apps is chat. Um, oftentimes people will have a group chat. Your audience cannot see this, only the panelists can see the chat that's taking place. Um, another app is the screen sharing app, which is a really great feature of a Hangout on Air. So if you had a guest that wanted to share a video or a presentation, they could choose a screen to actually share with uh, the panelists. So no, not only will the panelists see the screen share, but so will the audience. So once they select that window, they can click on share, and then they can um, stop the screen share and then go back to their camera. Um, the other app I'd just like to show you is the Q&A app. So you can enable um, questions and answers during the Hangout. Now you'll notice when I clicked on it, it says this feature is disabled. You have to do that before the Hangout begins. So just keep that in mind. If you want to experiment with that, uh, make sure you do it on the previous screen before you actually get into this Hangout. Um, Next is, is the capture um, feature. So if you're taking, if you're doing a Hangout and you wanted to take a picture of it, you could do that. Um, the Hangout toolbox is one that I use often. And if I click on that, this is where I can enable a lower third, what's called. So if I click on the little person icon, this is going to pop up. And if I click on, um, I have my name, Jen Sheffer, and underneath a lot of times people will enter like their Twitter handle or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my Twitter handle and then I can turn that on and um, you'll see that it's backwards. But if I click on the mirror, it, that's going to uh, flip and it'll look uh, correct for my viewers. So I just wanted to point that out. If I uh, come back over onto the left, I can click on the Hangout toolbox for that to go away. Another app is called the Control Room. Um, this one will allow you as the facilitator to control other guests that are in the Hangout. So if you have a um, panelist here that are making a lot of noise, I don't know if you heard the, the noise in the background. Uh, I think there's a track practice indoors right now. Um, but if you had a guest in the uh, Hangout who really wasn't understanding that they should mute their mic or they were having some issues with the camera, you can control their mic, their camera, as well as their volume. So I'd recommend using this if you have, again, several people in the Hangout just to give you, um, as a facilitator, a bit more control um, over the quality of the Hangout. Um, and last but not least, uh, nobody can get away with uh, doing a Hangout without experimenting with some of the Google effects. Um, they're quite fun, so everyone uh, watching this is a big fan of Google, and if you're from the Burlington uh, area, you know that we're from uh, the Red Devils here at Burlington High School. So uh, these are some of the uh, more entertaining apps that Google brings to us. So um, the last thing I'd like to point out before I show you what it looks like when we go live are um, the sharing button inviting people. Now, I do not invite people to the Hangout to be in the call and, and serve as a panelist by this button. What I do and what has worked for me is I click on the URL, which is up here on the top of this window. I copy that and then I paste it and send it to my guests via email. They click on the link and then they appear right here in the Hangout seamlessly. Um, from experience, I can tell you I have invited people uh, this way. I don't know uh, why, but I've had more success just simply copying and pasting the URL. So I don't know if that's been on my end or, or the recipient's end, but that's the way I would recommend doing it. Um, it's worked every time. Uh, the other thing that's important to note about these top buttons here is the mute microphone. When people are not talking, they should mute their microphone. Uh, audio feedback is a very common issue in a Google Hangout. Again, I speak from experience with that. So before you go live, I would recommend that everybody tests their mic, mutes their mic, and gets used to that. The other button right here is turning the camera off. If you turn the camera off, you'll notice my uh, lower third is gone. If I turn my camera back on, that lower third reappears. Uh, this button allows me to adjust the bandwidth usage if that is necessary. Um, sometimes the video call will be affected when you adjust that. Uh, the gear settings button right here will allow you to um, 
make adjustments to the camera, the microphone, your volume, uh, so on and so forth. And then finally, this button will allow you to leave the call. So we are, I think, at this point ready. I think I've demonstrated everything I wanted to show you. Um, and if I click on the Start Broadcast button, I receive a warning that says we are going live. We're about to broadcast live on Google Plus and YouTube that we can broadcast for up to eight hours, which is good because I'm a talker. Um, actually, this will be quite quick. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I get this blue indication here. We're going live. And we are now live. I am Jen Sheffer. I'm the mobile learning coach for Burlington Public Schools. I just demonstrated how to get started using Google Hangouts live on air. So this is going to be a very quick broadcast. But if you've never experimented with Google Hangouts live on air, I'd highly recommend it. It is an incredible way to redefine your classroom and truly break down the fall four walls of your classroom and connect them with industry experts, uh, students from all over the world, um, there can be global read-alouds, there can be uh, Google mystery calls, there's limitless possibilities for a Google Hangout Live on Air. The best part is you can have up to 10 people and you can archive your video on your YouTube channel to share not only with your school community but with a global audience and I'm a huge fan of Google Hangouts and if you'd like assistance please contact me, I'd be happy to walk you through the process but um, keep uh, sharing the great news about Google Apps for Education. So, I'm going to stop the broadcast. Have a great weekend. So I just stopped the broadcast and I have a notification here that the broadcast has been successfully ended. You'll see I'm off the air. And usually when you're in a call and you do go off the air, uh, you and your panelists can have a debriefing, you know, how did it go, how does everybody feel, celebrate, uh, play with some silly hats once more in your Google Effects uh, app. And um, it's really a great uh, tool. Uh, that uh, I really have enjoyed uh, learning. Um, and so, again, if you have any questions, if you're here in Burlington watching this and you'd like to have me come into your classroom uh, and help you get it set up, I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, and also show your students how to facilitate conversations. We've had help desk students doing this with industry folks, and it, they've done a phenomenal job. It's a wonderful way to demonstrate their communication skills and their professionalism. So. Again, thanks for watching, and um, I will be back with a follow-up screencast on another great product that you can experiment with in the classroom.